So welcome to a special weekday edition of the weekend <laughs> video podcast. But it's a Monday, Sunday? No, it's two. Well, it's technically Monday evening. This will be out. This will be out on Tuesday. Uh, but I just felt I felt compelled to put this out on video, just just cause. All right. So this um, this uh, podcast is entitled Antifa Gets Brick Deliveries. <laughs> and many of you people have already seen this type of thing. Antifa Gets Brick Deliveries. We'll get into it right after this. Be right back. I'm back and I'm gonna try and keep this short to the point uh, I gotta <laughs> I gotta start trying to do that because even watching myself or listening to myself for 25 or 30 minutes that ain't working bro it's just it's it's too much of me all right too much of a good <laughs> too much of a good thing is not a good thing oh yeah all right so anyway inexplicably there are pallets of bricks just appearing on city streets and sidewalks where none were previously, all right? So is this, <laughs> this is some kind of coincidence, I tell you. Just when rioting, destruction, and looting are ramping up all over the city over the George Floyd incident, the, the murder incident, um, it's almost as if the, the bricks were delivered right on time for a specific purpose at the height of the riots. I mean, what do you do with bricks other than building walls and throwing bricks at people and things? So there does I don't think they're building many walls, so my guess is they're throwing them, all right, at people and things. So, but it's like when you think about it, it's like those just-in-time deliveries. You know, these bricks showed up just in time for the riots. Okay, uh, might be a little after, but pretty pretty close in that window. And it's just like just-in-time delivering for like manufacturing when raw materials and pieces parts show up like the night before manufacturing is to begin on this particular product. So it's a just-in-time delivery, so the company doesn't have to inventory doesn't have to uh, uh, account for excess inventory of all this extra crap is that it comes in and it's used right away and it's put into a, like a bill of materials or something so that's what it is it's these bricks these pallets, pallets of bricks were just in time deliveries for the rioters I guess just saying um, but like I said there uh, as far as we can tell, and there's video evidence and witness to this on more than one occasion, there ain't no building going on in these areas where these bricks are being delivered. Just all of a sudden, where, well, I'll get, in, I'll get into that all of a sudden here. So looking at pallet loads of bricks just sitting on sidewalks, a guy from Dallas, and here's what I mean exactly. A guy tweeted <clears throat> that he was in the ver this very neighborhood in Dallas less than a week ago and there was no bricks there, okay? So there's no construction, and he also confirmed that there was no construction going on in this neighborhood, yet there's a pallet of bricks sitting on a sidewalk in Dallas, and he's, he's just panned over it, showed the pallet of bricks, it's on a pallet, um, and it's just set up, ready to go, but there's not a construction site in sight. And he just thought that was very odd. Yeah, you think? I know I lost that pallet. Of, where did I misplace that my pallet of bricks? I put it down and I walked away, and now I can't remember where I put it. You know, it's like a pack of gum or you know, whatever. <clears throat> so in Fayetteville, North Carolina, in a kind of a city square, a town square, there was a large pile of bricks that was neatly stacked up um, right near the city square. And it's the city center, as if they were being staged for something. I'm not sure what they were being staged for, but just saying. And a guy on Twitter, uh, which was a little suspicious of this neatly piled stack of bricks, 
a guy on Twitter commented that, <laughs> quote, they got them bricks, bro. <laughs> they protesting. S, S is crazy, you know, it's crazy. <laughs> Ain't no construction, unquote. <clears throat> and he pans, uh, he pans the phone 360 degrees around the entire area slowly, and you can see that there's not a stitch of construction, not an ounce of construction going on anywhere. And uh, like he said, there ain't no construction. Uh, they got them bricks, bro, and they protesting. Blank's crazy. <laughs> Blank be crazy. That's, uh, gotta love this. <clears throat> Another instance. And this is, like I said, all over the country. So, so far we have Fayetteville, North Carolina, Dallas, Texas. Um, does any of this have anything to do with Minneapolis? No. Rioters in Manhattan just happened to stumble upon a pallet load of red bricks set up um, with a yellow barrier around it, you know? And um, it appears that the thugs just happened, they just happened upon the stash of bricks. They, they pulled the, uh, the um, wood slat barrier off around it. There was the, there was the uh, undisturbed stack of bricks and off they went. And you could see guys in masks, black guys in masks, walk up, grab the bricks, run away. I don't know if they were building a house. Maybe it was Habitat for the Humanities. But I'm just guessing not. Just saying. Um, it just seems awfully coincidental and uh, convenient that where the riots were is where these big piles and pallets of bricks are. Just a sheep. Just, there's nothing to see here. Move along. Nothing to see here. At Arbor Lakes um, shopping area, at an Arbor Lake shopping area near Minneapolis. Finally, we're getting back to the hub of things, to the epicenter of rioting. Another photo of a large pile of bricks um, appeared to have been, del been delivered on a pallet, and the caption reads. Quote, so who's donating these pallet of bricks to these riot ravaged areas? Question mark. Sure there's surveil surely there's surveillance video. Um, and surely there aren't uh, <clears throat> they aren't being brought in by hand. No way, because they're on pallets. Nobody brings br stacks of bricks by hand and puts them on a pallet. They're being offloaded by forklift and placed there at night, who knows what. Uh, and then the and the, uh, the the tweet or whatever this is the caption goes on says start checking camera footage run license plates quote unquote and uh, on that note I think I'll take a quick break I'll be right back to finish this thing up. You're watching a special weekday edition of the Common Constitutionalist Video Podcast. Okay, I'm back, <clears throat> and uh, interesting, it went from May 80-something degrees to June 1st, and I'm wearing, a, I'm wearing a sweatshirt. I woke up this morning, it was 41 freaking, de 41 degrees outside, and I left my windows open last night. Burlesque, baby. Okay, enough of the, the weather. The weather. I don't know what the forecast is, supposed to go back up into the 80s. Happy now? Okay. So anyway... This is the last one, and it's a good one. It's a great one, actually. Then some guy named Benny Johnson tweets out a video of a white, long-haired, bearded chump, and he looked like a chump to me, man, handing out cash to young black protesters. Protesters, yes, because they're protesters. They're not rioters. <clears throat> and he's really not even trying to hide it. He's on a city street, and he's just handing out cash to these guys. <coughs> I guess because he's in the midst of a, a bunch of protesters, all masked up, and, and the way, frankly, everyone is, so how convenient is that, that Antifa doesn't even need to bring, they don't even need to spend money on their own masks or break, break, break them out of stock out of their mask inventory because everyone's already wearing them anyway, so they just fit right in. So anyway... I assume that he wasn't trying to hide it because he was basically in, in the presence of other thugs. So I guess, you know, that's that. So the whitey, who himself like, looks like a thug, 
Uh, I'm guessing he's probably an Antifa organizer. That's my guess, because these guys are heavily involved in this thing, and they're no doubt running it, and I'll get into that in a minute, too. But he's not the guy that will actually dirt... You see, that's, that's the thing about these Antifa guys. The, the guys that run the Antifa rallies, rallies, riots, um, they don't, they never get, they never dirty themselves up, okay? It's like terrorists. When you get, uh, you know, when you get up in the ranks like the Bin Ladens and the uh, Zakawis and those guys, they're not going to go blow themselves up for the cause. You're going to blow themselves up for their cause. They're going to convince you that it's worthy, that you're worthy to be blown up and to collect your 17, 72 Virginians, and uh, there you go. And But they're not, they won't get their hands dirty. So anyway, that that's what this Antifa organizer looked like. He was just looked like a long-haired thug, um, and he's not going to dirty himself up. He's going to allow the black man to get in trouble instead. And all you black leftists, you call us racist, okay? How about Antifa, which is basically an all-white gang of uh, anarchists and Marxists. Okay, so then, then Whitey is also seen, then after this, after he hands him the cash and what, he's also the, the black uh, guy, young black man, gets on a bike, and Whitey tells him that there's some picnic tables that must have been set out on a city street, and I, I, I don't know what, I, I, I can't remember what city this was, but at any rate, um, this white douche meat uh, says to the black guy, there's three picnic tables up there, up here, and he starts walking, the black guy takes off on his bike, Toward the picnic tables you never actually see the picnic tables but i guess they're set up on the sidewalk for you know outdoor dining or or something like that okay in the short clip they never say what the picnic tables were going to be for so i'm going to guess that they weren't for having an out a luncheon or an antifa business meeting outside my guess is they were going to take the picnic tables and throw them through store windows i'm just guessing though okay these Antifa guys, they're not violent at all, uh, and they, and and obviously these rioters, we can see what they, we would see, see what they have wrought um, in their uh, violent actions. In my opinion, this whole movement was either taken out, was either started originally by a Soros shell group, okay, or was taken over shortly after it came to life by Antifa, who gets who is a Soros shell group because they get their funding from George Soros's organizations, so to speak. And isn't it funny that there is very little to no word, this is hilarious actually, think about this if you haven't already thought about it. There's not a single word out there, or very little about social distancing in these riots, okay? These rioters aren't staying six feet apart, are they? They're not all wearing masks. They're, they're, as a matter of fact, I saw a bunch of them wearing masks. They pull them down to yell and scream, and then they put them back up. Well, where's, where's the spittle going? I mean, when you're yelling and screaming. It just, it's so stupid. So with all these riots and protests, thousands upon thousands of people flood into these city streets, and no one, none of these leftist outlets, none of these media outlets are saying a damn word about social distancing. They shouldn't be out there and whatnot. So you can't go to church and you can't do it. You can't go to a gym. You can't lay out on a beach. You can't do anything like that that actually is enjoyable to life and maybe a little productive and maybe serves your soul a little bit. But you can sure as hell go out and protest and riot. Well, not protest. You can sure as hell go out and riot, trash, burn, loot businesses all you like and no one, no authority is going to say boo to you. That's just, just, just it's, it's absolutely ridiculous. Um, as I've said in the past, safety is not a God-given constitutional right, okay? But the First Amendment is rioting also, and property destruction also isn't a God-given constitutional right. So we're doing compl things completely ass-backwards, where we're shutting the, uh, you know, the entire nation, if they had their way down, um, for normal people. But we're letting the thugs, we're letting thugs out of jail. And we're letting thugs riot and break things and burn things and beat people and all sorts of stuff and not a, not a care about social distancing. It's just completely, completely ass backwards. And this is, frankly, this is like, this is kind of like the Cloward and Piven strategy that you just, 
you just keep flooding with leftist ideals and ideas and, and programs and everything until the system just shuts down, bankrupts itself, or just collapses on its own weight. It, it's just, it's absolutely, it's absolute insanity. And it goes back to, I, I'm not, I'm not a betting man. Maybe I'll play the lottery every once every, every other blue moon. But if I were a betting man, I would put it all on, I'd bet it, I'd bet every dime I had on black. Because that's the that's the shade of George Soros's devil heart, black. This is all George. This is I guarantee you George Soros got his fingerprints all over this some some gum, and uh, that is where it, that's where it started and that's where it ends. Um, this is the Common Constitutionalist. I'm Brent Smith. Appreciate you watching. Um, trying to keep it a little shorter. I think I'm going to try and do a few more of these podcasts every once in a while. So I don't have to drone on for 30 minutes on the weekends and try and get everything in and go off tangents and all this other crap. I'll try to do five to ten minute videos and, and we'll just see how it see how it goes. What's the worst <laughs> worst that can happen? So that's it. I'm Brent Smith, Common Constitutionalist, signing off. See ya.